In this video, I'm going to show you how I plan and book my trips. Next month, I'm headed to Lithuania, to their capital, to check it out. And I was just sitting here planning everything and making all the bookings. Then I thought, oh, I just had a few conversations with other people telling me how difficult it is to plan a trip. So I thought, I'll do this video for you to tell you how I plan my trips, what are the uh, the websites I look at and how I make all my bookings. I'd like to think now that after traveling for a while I have a tiny bit of a system going on. This video will be about booking my trip to Lithuania but you can apply all these things because all these websites and apps that um, I will be using they are applicable to any destination in the world really. booked my ticket via Ryanair and it was so cheap so let's just go to Ryanair they fly from few places in London but I usually fly from London Stansted it's kind of the best option for me um, and then I put my destination let's go to the same exact dates that I'm going in And oh my god, it's 15 pounds to fly from London to Vilnius. Basically, it's cheaper than dinner in London. Um, this one is slightly more, but if you go a day before or a day after, like if you return, then it's like 14, and that's like 30 pounds for a ticket. And I think that's quite decent. First starting thing that I do for my trip research is going on Google Maps. I'm going to the country, then to the city where I'm going. And, and then I zoom in a bit to see what's happening. Usually the brown area is the old town or the protected area. So I start there. And then as you can see, um, you can start seeing some of the museums marked on there and some of the photo um, spots that there are this one is the national museum and it's located within like a nice seeming garden so i would save it to put it on my map the good thing about saving things on your Google Maps is they are saved into your account so whatever your account that you're signing on on Google Maps through your computer you can access through your phone so I get the offline um, Google Map and then all of these things are saved so even when I don't have internet I can just follow it this looks quite interesting um, three crosses okay we could save that as well sometimes it's overwhelming all the possible things that you could see from Google Maps like look they have so many options um, so instead I go to websites like inspire rock which help me plan my trip so see this is where I'm going um, going in March and then I like it. I don't want the very popular things, so I like it balanced. Um, you can go for hidden gems as well. Um, you can want it fast or I don't like it too slow, so medium is good. And then I could just lower from that, whatever. So I get culture, um, museums, outdoors, shopping. Actually, I'm not going to take shopping, but you can if you want. Relaxing, historic, wildlife. Why not? And then that gives me a day by day plan. Um, let me change the route because I get there late on the 14th. So, and then I leave early on Sunday. So I saved my changes and then I go to their day by day suggestions. And the good thing about it is you could assign yourself um, time as well. You can see it in the map which I think is absolutely useful to see the route and that kind of helps you as well to determine where you want to stay because everything is really organized. Um, I want to see it first as a list. Like this cathedral looks really good. The money museum, I don't know, it's not really, I don't think it's going to be 
that fantastic? The thing is, you could, I think you could change the activities and you could add into it. So you can either, you can also add your own type of activity. Like, there's no way I'm spending a whole day in a spa. I have that in London or like Morocco or like all the other places. So goodbye, delete attraction, like there's no way. Then I could add my own activity. Um, and it gives me different things. So this is the city nearby. Um, it does look pretty, but I'm not gonna spend a whole day there. There's no way. There is the palace of Grand Duke. It looks quite interesting. I can load more. Like this could be a realistic option for me. So I added it. Ooh, the Museum of Illusion sounds like a good idea. So I want to add it too, uh, but you get the idea. You could add whatever you want. You could play with your schedule. You like, I wouldn't only depend on this. Like you could switch them around, but it's good to have a clear idea. Like I never actually stick to it. It was like, oh, from 10 to 11, I'll probably, by the time I roll out of bed and have my brunch and get ready it'll just be 11 and then i'll just go slowly in between these places and i actually don't mind you can fit in as much as possible you can follow the schedule but that tires me out so i don't like to do it um another option is to go to the tourism board of the city that you're visiting so here is the villainous tourism they also have um, a plan for three days that is just free on their website, which is super useful. So this is day one with a few suggested places and they, day two and day three. Obviously these places are like the most popular. These are going to be the busiest. I also look up on Google to see different options. So I got a few from publications like the New York Times, and then there's obviously the ones that you cannot go any place without, which is like the Lonely Planet, um, TripAdvisor, and Rough Guides. So I check all of these. Um, for specifically for tours and such, I go into Get Your Guide. There's other websites, that's just what I've tried and it worked for me. It could work for you, it could not. It's entirely up to you. Um, there are like reviews for the tours that you want. This is an option. It's um, a city nearby. So, and I love day trips, so I might try to see that. Like it's 37 pounds per person. It's starting to push it in terms of prices um, and the budget that I like to go, but you get to see a lot of places, the museums is included, the transfer. It's probably cheaper if you just find your own way there, um, which I might do, I still don't know, but it's good to see what's out there. There are like the reviews of people, what they've said about it. Um, for city tours, like I love going on city tours to discover a place. So going on a city tour is very essential, especially the first day. So I can know more about the place and I know which places to visit next. So there is this option, but being in Europe, a lot of places offer free walking city tour. So that's exactly what I typed into Google and I got the freetours.com. And the free tours is basically a tour that you go on for two hours and you tip the person if you like the tour. Another thing that helps me with my research is some of the online communities like Girls Love Travel or Girls vs. Globe and I just type in the city that I want to go to. Basically when I decide what I want to see and where I want to go, it really helps me pick where I want to stay as well. So these are my dates and I'm just gonna search. The thing I like about booking.com is I can set the budget really straightforwardly and it's just not only that, I set a few things right from the get-go. Um, so the review score has to be um, eight plus 
I, I don't stay in places that are seven and six. There's just no point. Um, there's like so many things that you could choose from, like um, with the neighborhoods. Like I don't know much about the neighborhood, so I'm just gonna stick to Old Town and see what's there. Not everywhere um, you go has a good old town to stay sometimes it's good to avoid it but in this case i just want to be close to the things i'm gonna go with the map view the map is a really useful way to see where everything is located and like all this is the old city per the old town parameter like this seems really nice okay but it's 200 and 200 this one is good it has a spurp rating and it's 112 it looks okay-ish um after selecting a few on the map i just go and look at them this one for example has only two reviews there is no way i'm staying somewhere that only has two reviews i would not recommend it go with like a minimum of 50. this one has 17 not too bad but again it's like i prefer having um Places that are reviewed more. This one has more reviews and they're all positive. But then you have this place which has 800 reviews and that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's so much better to read a place that has more reviews. People give you a lot of insight. And I like to read the negative comments as well because they tell you exactly what's happening. And if you want even further comments, just put in the name to Google and find out on TripAdvisor to read more reviews. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found it useful and do tell me in the comments below if you use any of these tips and if this will help you planning your trip. I'll see you in the next video.